As farmers start thinking about their fertilizer decisions, we have a number of tools and resources that can make life a whole lot easier. These free tools use science to help take some of the guesswork out of farming's most important business decisions. Perhaps our most popular tool is the Return on Investment Calculator, exclusive to the economics program. For the past few years, growers have been using it to determine how much they can net from a fertilizer investment. This is especially useful for cash renters on the fence as to whether or not they should or how much they should invest on potassium or phosphorus fertilizer. More often than not, growers find that investing in KRP nets a greater return than if they had skimped to save money. Here's how it works. Let's input corn. Potassium. I live in Illinois and my soil test level is between 75 and 100 parts per million. Let's just pick one acre. Let's assume a yield potential of 230 bushel corn. We'll enter 0060 potash at $350 a ton, and I'll be optimistic and choose a crop price of $3.60. And if we choose the university recommended potassium application rate, we see that we stand to net an average of $86 an acre. So let's say you have 200 acres. You're looking at a net return of $17,200 from an investment in potassium. The key number in this whole equation is your soil test level. If your soil test indicates that your levels are low, investing in K and or P is almost always your best business decision, especially if you're growing corn or soybean. The Growing Degree Day calculator is another useful tool. A Growing Degree Day is basically the amount of heat accumulated above a specific threshold that allows for biological growth. And for corn, that threshold is 50 degrees Fahrenheit or 10 degrees Celsius. So if your average air temperature for one day was 51 degrees, that means you accumulated one GDD for that day. If your average temperature for a day is 80 degrees, that means you're accumulating 30 GDD for that day. Let's run through an example so you can see what I'm talking about. I'm going to put in the location of where I am now, so 44691. I'm going to choose corn. Let's say we plant it on May 25th, and let's pretend the current date is June 30, 2017. The result is 652 cumulative GDDs. Why that's important is it helps us predict where a crop's going to be within its life cycle, and it can also be very useful for determining vegetative stage and when you need to be out there scouting for problems. The nutrient removal calculator is also a must-use tool. All you have to enter is what your expected yield is or what your previous crop yield was, and then you can clearly see how much nutrient was removed and how much you have to supply to ensure that you're maintaining your soil test level and pushing productivity. For this example, let's choose Imperial for our measurement unit. Let's go with soybean. And let's assume that we had a really good growing environment and yielded 72 bushels per acre. And you can see just how much N, K, and P were removed. Something to always consider when processing these numbers is also have in mind what your soil test level is. So if your soil test level is really low and you're only supplying what's being removed, that's not gonna build up your soil test. You're actually gonna to have to increase your application rates to see your soil test level build over time. So I encourage growers to give these three calculators a try. And if you have any questions on how to use or interpret the calculators, feel free to reach out via email and someone from our agronomy team will get back with you. But I think you'll find like thousands of other growers, these tools can be a big help when making some of your biggest growing decisions.